the Nigerian Senate has today resumed the screening of President Bola Tinubu's ministerial nominees. And let's cross live now to Abuja for that. 100 instead of one from remedial studies. I graduated from Bayero University with a degree in medicine uh, in 2005. Then I joined Murtala Muhammad Specialist Hospital for my house job. After I completed my house job, I was posted to Plateau State for my National Youth Service. National Methodological Development Center as the medical officer of that uh, prestigious institution. After completing my NYIC, I came back to Kano State and I joined Amin Kano Teaching Hospital for my residency program where I completed and I became a member of the West African College of Physicians and also a fellow, a consultant, a family physician. After that, after I completed, I moved back to Murtala Muhammad Specialist Hospital to serve the people of Kano State as a medical consultant, family physician. It was in 2019, on the 5th of November 2019, that I was appointed by His Excellency, the former governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Morgan Luzi OFR, as Honorable Commissioner Ministry for Higher Education. I served for almost four years, and we really had a very, very tremendous achievement at that institution. To start with few, uh, actually, we had to make a harmonization and strengthening relationship between uh, the tertiary institutions and Colonel State Government, which made us not to have any problem of strike. We also upgrade or establish a university of education in Kano State. Saada Trimi is a non-college of education in Kano State. So uh, we, we, we got approval by NUC to upgrade Saada Turimi into university, considering the population of Kano State. Seeing moving Saada Turimi to become a university, then we made some arrangements for conversion of some of our tertiary institutions so that they will be able to also produce NCE to fill in the gaps that uh, we can get from converting Saada Turimi into a university. We constituted a visitation panels to all the tertiary institutions for us to look and see where we have problems for all to uplift the educational standard uh, of our institutions in Kano State. Uh, we also constituted governing councils for all the institutions for them to monitor the progress of our institutions for us to uh, make education better in the state and beyond. We also established um, teaching hospital, Mutala, Muhammad Abdullah was a teaching hospital for our students that are uh, offered that uh, reading medicine in Yusuf Metamasule University. In the terms of scholarship, we also did tremendously. We went around, we made sure students that were taking some foreign and then also internal scholarships were cleared. We also renewed our memorandum of agreement between France and Kano State Government. So, Your Excellencies, uh, uh, this is uh, something about uh, Maria and uh, our history. And uh, if given or been confirmed, Your Excellency, my values and aspirations would be in line with His, uh, His Excellency's dream for us to have uh, a better tomorrow and a better. Uh, nation by God Christ. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, the dismissed uh, Deputy Senate President. This is almost your nominee. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, the nominee before us, first of all, let me thank Mr. President for bringing her forward for confirmation because she's one of the best we have in Canada. She is one of the best we have in Canada. Mr. President and colleagues, the nominee we are seeing comes from, quote unquote, the conservative north. But yet, but yet, she was able to go to school, not only went to school, but went ahead to read medicine 
and now she's a fellow in the medical profession, a first class consultant. But yet, she upholds our tradition, our tradition that allows for respect, that allows for decorum in the way men and women behave. And she did not stop only at the medical profession, her point of, you know, her, her profession. But as well, she's a very, very good administrator. Because he veered off and became an administrator, a commissioner of higher education. She has done very well. She has done very well. You could see from the way she started her, to introduce herself without doing anything. Without doing anything. On her own. On her own. On her own, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, please. He wanted her to start with her children. She started on her own. But I thought she started with her voice. And so but, but, uh, conclude on her and, and then advise the Senate. Mr. President, we are proud of her. She's an epitome of our tradition and culture. And yet, very, very educated. And have working. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, this is the kind of way we want our children to be. I want my daughter to be like her. Mr. President, I want your daughter to be like her. Mr. President, well, I, by virtue of my provision, uh, by, by my, my position here, I would have said she should just buy and go, but I would not do that because of my position. Well, I know it were, well, I know if my junior brother Akao comes up to speak, he will say so. Mr. President, I don't need to speak any longer about this. She has spoken for herself. She's first class. And his CV is there. He's, he's, it has spoken everything about her to all of us. Mr. President, let's just uh, allow her to make some comment and then she take her leave. Mr. President, I still submit. The civil senator, Hunger. We invite the distinguished senator Ismail Akau. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my dear fellow distinguished colleague, I am Suleiman Abrahman Kau uh, from Kano South Senatorial District, Kano, Mr. Uh, President. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to talk much, but uh, last week, when we are emphasizing, we, the people of Kano State, of a withdrawal of one of our daughter, suddenly, from your announcement, we just heard the name of our Dr. Maria from Bunkure, Kano South. We became excited and commend Mr. President of doing so. Not because she appointed her as described by DSP, but she is the first card carrying minister from 1999 to death from marginalized Kano South Senatorial District. Therefore, Mr. President, I must awfully commend Mr. President of appointing her or appointing one of us, not one of us alone, one of our best, who demonstrated her capacity during her tenure 
as commissioner from 1999 uh, to 2003. Although she is a professional, as uh, described by my big brother, DSP, but one good part of her, she is connected with grassroots. She is connected with grassroots because she was born in Bunkure, school, primary school in Bunkure. Her two secondary school, Arabic secondary school, Tudungwada, and Garko Science Secondary School are all from Kano South Senatorial District. It demonstrates how connected she is with grassroots. Although she is APC during the election, I am an NPP, but I am highly delighted and commended as this uh, appointment. When I start uh, building her CB, the preamble of her CB which all of us from Kano, not uh, from Kano South alone, can testify that she is a very diligent family, a married woman, public health physician, erudite educationist, highly organized, and the efficient professionals who demonstrated her ability, her capacity, who achieved a lot within a short period of time. Thank you, uh, this Senate. I am certain that my dear Anquaman Transformer, <laughs> the chairman of Correctional Senate, <laughs> will allow the nominee uh, to take her lead. I am more particular and special when I read about her school. By the grace of God, my daughter too is qualified medical uh, doctor. I know how she go through on achieving her dream. She school in a public school, rural school, but see how he addressed the Senate, the Senate today. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Thank you, the good people of Bunkure local government. Thank you, the good people of Kano South Senatorial District, the marginalized uh, senatorial district in Nigeria. I so submit, Mr. President. Thank you. Distinguished <laughs> <laughs> Senator Kau, I think the only point of disagreement is the word marginalized. Because if they were marginalized, she would not be here. Uh, the, uh, yes, I agree with you. You have commended the president, and the, the, the president has done well. But you politicians from Kano must not continue the marginalization of our community, because you have seen that it is not the federal government that is marginalizing our community. It is you, Ismail Akawu, and your other colleagues, politicians in Kano. It's a, uh, 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 Baro, Baro, Baro has supported her. And so are is happy. So, uh, 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 DSP, you can come under any point of order to correct the marginalization you have been doing since. <laughs> Mr. President, Order 52.4. A senator must confine his observations to the subjects under discussion and may not introduce matter irrelevant thereto. My junior brother, Senator Abdurrahman Kawasumela, veered off from what we are doing here by going into something, into a narrative that is not correct. Mr. President, I want to tell you, you know Senator Kabir Gaya, he was a governor. Well, Rimi first. Rimi was a governor of Kano State. He came from Kano South. Kabir Gaya, cousin, his cousin. <laughs> Kabir Gaya was a governor of Kano State. He was from Kano South. So why do you now say Kano South? Do I need to say more? No. How now do you say Kano South is marginalized? You have produced two governors, whereas my own Kano North only produced governor once, Ganduji, but they produce. Two governors. How can you say? How can you now say you are marginalized? You produce governors two times. 
Two times, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. President, Kano South, the famous Nigerian uh, Police Academy is located in Kano South. They have a university of technology owned by Kano State is in Kano South. How do Nigerian Law School? Kano South. Nigerian Law School. And now you have Bunkuri. You have Maria Bunkuri from Kano South. How do you now say you are marginalized? You are not marginalized. Mr. President, I'll just submit. Uh, the, the very respected Deputy Senate President, uh, thank you for the elucidation and education. Honestly, from what you are saying, uh, it's out of tune for us to ask his man like I want to apologize, but uh, he doesn't need to. Uh, because all we need to do is to, to all we need to do is to is to go by our rules. So your point of order is sustained. Uh, the senator is on so. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair. My distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Osita Izunaso. I want to first of all commend Mr. President for the appointment of the nominee and also to endorse what the Deputy Senate President have said in relation to the character and personality of the nominee. But we must ask you some basic questions. That is why you are standing before us. Mr. President, sitting as chair, you will agree with me that COVID-19 took Nigeria and other nations of the world on our words. But Nigeria did extremely very well in managing COVID-19 under the chairmanship of the then SGF, Boss Mustafa. Nigeria was highly commended about the way we managed COVID-19. But we learned from them that we didn't even have the necessary Medicare to approach such pandemic, assuming that it comes again. Then my question would be, as somebody who is well experienced in the medical sector, what would be your advice to the Federal Executive Council in terms of preparedness against a future pandemic like COVID-19? Thank you. The senior Senator Mongono. Uh, distinguished Senate President, distinguished Senators, my name is Mame Tair Monguno. I represent Borno North Senatorial District. My question, well, first and foremost, I commend Mr. President for nominating you as a ministerial nominee, and it is my hope and prayer that eventually this Senate will confirm your nomination. My question is with regard to the issue of qualification to be a medical doctor, particularly with regard to foreign trained students. Of recent, the avalanche of complaints from all the nooks and crannies of the country, particularly our sons and daughters that have gone outside the country to train as a medical doctor. By the time they come back home, they are subjected to a particular examination. And that examination, the failure rate is about 80%. The failure rate is about 80%. As a medical doctor, in your opinion, what does it, why, why, why is it that there is such a massive rate of failure, and how do we ameliorate that situation? Is it by stopping those that are desirous of getting medical education outside the country to concentrate? And then the problem is that our medical schools do not have the requisite capacity to But by the time they come, it is very difficult for them to pass that examination. And I know 
they will write, they will not qualify. And then the fees that you are supposed to pay for you to qualify for that exam. Then the being a medical doctor, that you and are that supposed is what to pay is driving them to go outside for you to qualify to for that education. examination. It's very, but by very the time they come, it is very it's difficult the for them. To pass. Cannot afford to pay for that examination fee. Thank you. This uh, is Senator Tony Way. Thank you. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Dr. Tony Moye. I represent the people of Anambra Central District. Distinguished colleagues, first of all, let me thank Mr. President, irrespective of political party affiliation, by appointing this lady. I never knew this lady from Adams. I'm not from Kano State. I'm APC political party as a president, although I was before. Being that she was determined to succeed, she went to School of Basic Studies in Kano, did IGMB, so as to qualify her to proceed further. At the age of 40, 40 years, this lady became a fellow of West African College of Physicians. At the age of 40, it's very rare. A fellow of West African College of Physicians, at the age of 40, it's very rare in Nigeria for a lady to aspire. And at the end of the day, she succeeded in becoming a fellow of West African College of Physicians at the age of 40. This is a rare feat this lady has done. In addition, she went to read masters in public health. That's part that she's a consultant already. She's today a holder of master in public health. So I'm very impressed by her appointment. But I have one question to ask. Uh, my dear nominee, my colleague, if by God's grace this Senate confirms you are a member of the Federal Executive Council, irrespective of the portfolio you'll be assigned to, what are you going to do? What steps are you going to do to boost immunization policy in Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria? Because the expanded program on immunization was launched in Nigeria in 1979. Immunization, especially children below the age of 12 years. But today in Nigeria, where you have the least level of vaccination as a concern in Nigeria is northern Nigeria. Very sad. That's why I see a lot of diseases, especially the children suffer, the diphtheria and others prevalent in northern Nigeria. So my question is this. If you are confirmed and a member of this cabinet, what are you going to do to help to bring the immunization program? That program was launched in 1979. So northern Nigeria can come at least near par to what is obtainable in other geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity. God bless you. The Senior Senator Omae. Excellency, the Senior President, sitting as Chair of the whole. Uh, Excellency, thank you for the opportunity. Let me commend very highly the nominee for a very beautiful presentation of her resume and to congratulate you very highly for your journey in life so far. I'm very proud of what I have seen here. Your Excellency, let me also commend this Senate. You know, sometimes uh, when the public uh, wants to criticize the Senate over this beautiful job we are doing, they do it out of context. And uh, I am sure that they don't care to listen to the regime as being read out by the nominees before us. So let me commend you and commend the Senate for a very beautiful job uh, we're doing. I've looked through your regime, and uh, it is state of joy and uh, something to thank Mr. President very highly. Uh, some people came here and say for the first time, uh, that have been nominated as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
their, from their senatorial zone. So uh, Mr. President has this gift of not only fishing out for the best, but doing everything possible for balancing. I am very concerned, Mr. Senate President, uh, about a particular you know, uh, program in the health sector. And this program is a situation that the Medical Association has allowed where you will be a medical doctor in public institution and you also have your own uh, private clinic. There is a competing interest here, Mr. President. And uh, I tell you, I have a very bad experience of this. My father, may his soul rest in peace, had a, a surgery in teaching hospital in Nugu sometime, and he was seen by a very good uh, surgeon, did wonderful work, and he was made alive. When the same uh, problem came out again, and he went back to the same hospital, the consultant told him to rather come to his own clinic. And being satisfied with the works of that consultant, he went to his own clinic. And the consultant did a beautiful job, and then, of course, put an infusion and left home. In the night, there was a reverse, you know, blood was rather coming into the uh, uh, the, 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 the infusion rather than the water going into the body. And there was nobody to attend to him. The, the nurse had slept off. These private clinics, most of the time, they have very slim number of workers. And so you find out that it's a very competing you know, uh, interest. My question is, is there any way we can take a second look? When I was governor, I made it very clear that if you are going to work in a hospital, please, you will not have a private clinic. And so we have to do a balancing. If you are going to work in the public institutions, you know, and the public uh, uh, health, you have to find a way not to have a private clinic. This is very important because most of the time, as we are saying the, the salaries of uh, you know, healthy uh, workers should be increased. The problem is not even the salary. It is patriotism. When this is done, can you now give us all the attention as far as public health institutions are concerned? Second one is to appeal to you. We have one vital institution in our medical university in my state. When I was there, I built dialyzer factory. And the dialyzer factory is the only factory that produces dialyzer in the whole of Africa. And I was smart to also obtain a patent in the name of a Bonny State government. My question is, is it possible to give attention to this factory so that we can replicate it even in the six geopolitical zones and be able to exp export this very important aspect of kidney care? to West African countries and the other African countries. Thank you. This is Senator Omai. She's going to answer your question. But the two things you didn't mention. Did your father survive? Oh. No, my father died because of uh, the negligence of uh, you know, that private hospital. So I'm, I'm an orphan, uh, Mr. <laughs> so you have to find a way. You have to find a way to treat me better as senior president. <laughs> May so rest in peace. May so rest in perfect peace. I will father you. <laughs> uh, let, let me listen to the civil senator, Hanga. You have a nominee from Kano in front of you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Rufaya Hanga representing Kano Central. I just went out to take my injection in your officer. Uh, <laughs> but I believe the deputy, your deputy, sir, and my colleague here must have spoken on my behalf. 
So I think I stand by whatever they said. Thank you very much, sir. For the, the nominee in totality. Thank you. I support the nominee, sir. Thank you very much. The last question. Thank you, the President of the Senate and my dear colleagues. My name is Dalintin Wokocha. I represent the entire Nigeria, Betabia Central in particular. Madam Nominee, I'm impressed with your resume, but I want to veer a little bit into another area, that is education. Because I can see in your page five of your uh, resume, your CV, uh, you say some accolades and achievement as a public servant. And I can see that out of the 10 items, the accolades attracted, you know, all of them are hinged solely on education matters. I have a concern which so many people and so many quarters have espoused as well. And that concern is the way history as a subject in Nigeria is going completely dead. And I know history as a subject touches every aspect of our existence, both medical, social, economic, because if we do not have a memory bank of what happened yesterday, it will be very difficult for us to calculate and measure what will happen today and tomorrow. And I know in our secondary schools and primary schools, those days, history was very key. It was almost like a compulsory subject, which guided our performance and our expectations and the way we related and worked within our society. If at all that you are appointed as commissioner education, or in, minister, sorry, or in any way you are part of the executive council, will you raise your voice? Now we are working very hard trying to recreate the Nigerian visibility in the uh, 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 tourism. Will you lend your voice to say so strongly that history as a subject should be made as a compulsory course or subject from our primary school to the uh, secondary and tertiary. Because that will help us. For instance, today, we can have our Naira see all the uh, uh, prominent men shown in the currency our children are carrying. But if you ask them, how did this person manage? What and what did they do to feature in this note? They do not have the history. They don't know anything about it. So I think. For us to strengthen our economy, we need history to guide our pathway. Will you, in any way, lend your voice to making sure that history will be a compulsory subject in Nigeria's system? Thank you. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Uh, Dr. Bunkure, uh, the, the floor is yours. But just add only one question. Uh, uh, I think outside this country, one of the things they do is continuous refresher courses for medical doctors, uh, which is a way of training and retraining to bring them up to date with the uh, current realities. For instance, we are talking about artificial intelligence. Uh, you have, you have, oh, we are almost passing the period of robotic surgeries and all that. So I don't know if you are given the opportunity, either in the medical area or in the educational area. Educationally, you should, uh, uh, would you like to introduce training and retraining of teachers uh, in the medical profession? Will you undertake consistent and quarterly uh, refresher courses for medical doctors so that you bring them up to date with the current practices uh, long after they had left? medical colleges, answer those questions as you can. Thank you very much for the questions. I will start with the issue of uh, COVID-19. COVID-19 is one of the most uh, tragic uh, experience we had all over the world. It started in 2019, December, and we thought the world has come to an end. But with the effort that was made in Nigeria, and the strong task force that was headed by SGF of 
that time, uh, was Mustafa. Uh, Nigeria has really done wonderfully well. We're talking about preparedness. Sometimes you learn from experience. And this is one of the reasons that we need to prepare. We are not praying for any one of all these emergencies, but this is something that is very crucial from the experience we had in the past. And then the legislature has a very significant role to play. And also the issue of funding that should be set aside to take care of such things if it happens. But we are not praying to have anyone by God's grace. And uh, it's not only COVID-19, like now we have a diphtheria, which at least it's not so open because of the preparation we had during the COVID-19 that made us to take care of the issue of the diphtheria that is not uh, even, people are not even aware that we have such issues uh, on ground. And this is because of how fully we manage the issue of COVID-19 with a very successful outcome, and it has now become a history. The second question is on the issue of qualification and the foreign students that read the MBBS. Uh, the two senators, we're talking about MBBS, we're talking about human lives. This is something that we have to be very serious about it. So that's why the exams are really sometimes so tough. And then there are so many differences. Some might read their medicine in China, some might read it in India, some might go to the United States. And these are areas that we have different incidents and prevalence of some infectious diseases and other diseases, communicable or non-communicable. You might go to China, you will never see a case of malaria in there. So to manage it is totally different from what you have in Nigeria. For that, sometimes our children that go to read abroad, they have problem with seeing cases, several cases that they did not manage there. So when they come to write the exams by uh, Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, then they now have difficulties. And then this is the reason why we're talking about the issue of internship. Like some of the foreign uh, schools, they usually give time for our students to come back to their original uh, countries so that they get used to the cases and then move back to write their exam. Definitely with this, uh, the rate of passing exams will go higher. And also the training, there are schools that give all this training and mocks exams before writing the real MDCN examination. And I know uh, from Kano, there was a time we took over 102 female students to read medicine in Sudan. And when we brought them back, they wrote that exam. And over 70% of them, they passed the exam because we have some similarities between Sudan and Kano. Some cases, they've managed, they have seen them there, so they are not new to them. Uh, in Nigeria. So, so this is few of the factors. So what we need to do is to have this collaboration that some schools might be sending their students back home for the internship and also some courses. And even their exposure to the patient, the way they will be given patients to manage here, they might not have the opportunity to do it outside their countries. So, so these are some of the reasons and we have to look into it and see how we manage it better. But the issue about boosting uh, immunization policy, we're talking about policy. We have to look at uh, where we are. Then we look at our strength in whatever policy we have. What are our strengths? Where do we have weaknesses? What are the opportunities we have on ground that will help us to boost that uh, policy? And also, what are the threats or the challenges that we need to overcome? So with this sort, Definitely, we'll look and see where we have problems, where we need to do better, and then we'll boost the immunization policy in Nigeria. The issue of private and public work. Actually, MDCN is really frowning at her. In fact, it's illegal. Whenever you want to have a private hospital, you must work outside the working hours. You shouldn't be at a private hospital while you're supposed to be 
in the public hospital. As he said, this is not really what uh, MDCN is frowning at it because it's affecting the quality of care we give uh, to our patients. And then definitely it's something that we have to look into and see what are the things we we'll bring out of it to strengthen the policy on this uh, issue. Then the issue of a factory that produces uh, dialyzers. Your excellencies are one of the leading cause of death and the most expensive illness is end-stage renal disease. And this is where dialyzers come. There are some that do well uh, with uh, transplant, which is the end management. But for some that cannot get a donor, they have to be on dialysis. So to strengthen these factories or to produce more, maybe uh, in the next, uh, zonally, maybe we have some, because like uh, Distinguished was talking, he was talking about a personal factory that belongs to him. So the government should have such factories, at least at every zone of the nation, that will significantly reduce the burden on the patient and also reduce the mortality rate from end-stage renal disease. Senator, sir, the issue of history. History. Uh, the, uh, distinguished nominee, uh, our sister, our doctor, our educationist, uh, thank you for the, uh, uh, the, the other question about uh, whether you support the reintroduction of history, the reintroduction of history into a, a, a curriculum. Just that. That it was highlighted by the distinguished senator. History is very, very important cause. But for us to say we want to make it a mandatory, definitely there must be a committee we have to look in total. We have to look at the advantages and disadvantages. If the advantages or the benefits outweigh the risks, then we decide as whether we make it compulsory or we leave it as the way it is. Because so many schools are now reading history. And it depends on what even a student, we even need a, a career guidance and counseling. It depends on what a child wants to read when he goes up. Some might need history, some might not need history. So when you make it uh, compulsory, definitely some, they might not need it, depending on what they are reading. If it's compulsory, somebody that is reading medicine, sir, I might not need to go to history, unless if I want to make it a kind of a leisure thing. So we have to look in total. We cannot say it's good to make it compulsory. There must be a committee that will look into it and see the benefits. If it outweighs the risks, then we make it compulsory. So you align yourself with the policy of President Paul Ahmed Chinibu on teamship. Teamship. Because you just mentioned here that the question of whether history should be compulsory in our schools or not will depend on should depend on uh, the collective decision of Nigerians. In other words, you want to suggest that a committee in the Federal Executive Council should be set up, and if you are lucky to be a member, you contribute your quota, and then when they will come up with recommendations after they've looked at the advantages and disadvantages, and thereafter they will recommend to the president and the federal government on that. I think with that, we have uh, satisfied this Senate, and you have been able to acquit yourself uh, credibly, and we have every right to be proud of uh, a women's gender. Uh, you can now step forward and take, a, take leave of the Senate, and you'll hear from us.